Hey everybody! Welcome to another episode of Bringing the Zoo to You. My name is Jess. I'm an animal care specialist here at Brookfield Zoo. And today I get to talk to you guys about hibernation. And what better animals to talk about hibernation with than our two resident brown bears that live here at the zoo, Jim and Axie. They are behind me right now and they have recently woken up from hibernation and part of waking up from hibernation means that you get to have some food items that you haven't had you know since before your hibernation so i'm gonna let you guys watch jim and axie enjoy their food items and talk to you guys about hibernation as we go so like i said jim and axie just recently woke up from hibernation now what is hibernation that is something that happens with animals. It's used to save energy to get through food scarcity or food shortages and also to survive the extreme cold. When an animal hibernates, it goes through a deep sleep. Its breathing and heart rate slows down and its body temperature goes down for a relatively long period. Because it's a deep sleep, they typically wake up slowly. Of course, here at the zoo, there's no food shortage here for our bears, but we do mimic the conditions they would find in their native habitat by increasing and decreasing their diet in a planned way. We also put up to 20 bales of wood wool and straw in the hibernation den here at the zoo to allow the bears to build a nest. Jim usually enters the, de the den first and builds a nest, and then he allows Axie to come in and build another nest closer to the underwater viewing window. As preparation for the hibernation stage, bears accumulate fat in autumn. The stored fat will be used when the temperature gets colder in the winter. Jim and Axie really start ramping up their fat storage in August, and they eat as much as 12,000 calories per day. And hibernation is not a continuous process. Some animals may wake up from hibernation to eat, drink, or clean themselves, and then they go back to inactivity. Some animals may hibernate anywhere from a few days to several months. Jim and Axie typically hibernate from December until April, although the temperature fluctuations can change this. If the temperature gets above 50 degrees, they come out of the den and sleep on exhibit. They also sometimes come inside for a little bit of chow. Now Jim and Axie are here at the zoo because they were orphaned on Admiralty Island in Alaska in 1995. They were placed here at the zoo by the Alaska Fish and Game Department. Jim and Axie are now 26 years old. When they arrived, they weighed about 70 pounds each, and now they weigh around 800 pounds, Whoa. with Jim being the slightly heavier bear. These bears' weights fluctuation between hibernation at the beginning and end is about 100 pounds. And can you believe these two big bears, when they were just babies, they are born at only one pound. It's pretty incredible, given how big they are now. <laughs> Now, brown bears are considered threatened by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Some of the major threats are habitat fragmentation, meaning there are limited corridors for bears to pass through in search of food, dens, and mates. Habitat degradation is also impacting the bears. Habitat degradation means land development. So that means that land that was typically where bears would live um, has been developed for human use and that results in the habitat fragmentation um, which limits the bears from going from one area to the next. Now brown bears and black bears are also heavily impacted by um, attractants that cause bears to become habituated to humans and human settlements. So those attractants include garbage, um, food for household pets being left outside, or improper removal and storage of trash by campers. So remember, there's lots of ways that you can help brown bears out in their native habitat. You can support uh, the Zoo's Conservation Fund, which supports organizations like Yukon, um, as well as Vital Ground. And those organizations, they are basically, um, they support an in interconnected system of wildlands and where wildlife and people can thrive so that the bears can pass through those corridors that we were talking about. Other ways you can help them is that if you're out in a bear habitat, make sure you secure your food and garbage so that it does not attract wildlife. Now people typically ask me how to tell these two bears apart. Um, we've got Jim and Axie. So Jim is our slightly larger bear. He has a more round kind of dish shaped face and his 
fur can tend to be slightly blonder depending on that. And Jim is the one who just looked this way now. Um, <laughs> so he is the one with the slightly uh, blonder colored fur at some points of the year and Axie is further back. And there, um, I am sure you can tell by now, the food items that they're enjoying today for the first time since before their hibernation is they've got some frozen watermelon and some blueberries uh, that they're really enjoying. They really do love fruit quite a bit. So this is a special day for Jim and Axie and I'm glad you guys were able to come out here and, and watch them enjoy these treats. So what's the first thing they do when they wake up? Good question. Uh, these guys typically when they wake up, um, sometimes they go to the bathroom, so, but a lot of times they are looking to maybe get some food when they wake up. Uh, these brown bears, as you can see, they do enjoy food. So a lot of times they're looking for a snack. Um, sometimes they'll drink water as well. Are these the bears who were across from Children's Zoo in the old bear grottos? That is correct, yep. They have been here since 1995. So they did live in those old bear um, grottos and they moved to this exhibit in 2010. How do they hibernate here at the zoo? Good question. So what their hibernation looks like here at the zoo is that we increase the diet that they get in the fall and we let them gain a good amount of weight. Um, we give them more and more diet in the fall. And then as it approaches December, we drop the diet down and we, we give them all that straw and wood wool that I was talking about in a den. We actually have a hibernation den here at Brookfield Zoo. It's in the underwater viewing area. Once you pass the two um, underwater viewing pools, if you keep going, there's a, a window straight into their hibernation den. So in that den, we'll create all this substrate that they can build a nest in. And the combination of that nest material showing up and their diet coming down and the days getting shorter and colder, that signals to the brown bears to kind of get sleepy for the winter. They just naturally uh, get sleepier. Um, and so then they pretty much sleep in that hibernation den for almost the whole day and night. Um, they might be up and active for about a half hour um, every day, these guys, um, but they, they sleep for a very big portion of the day. And that, like I said, that goes um, from December all the way through the beginning of April. So these guys have just recently woken up. Um, if the springtime has some uncharacteristically very warm days all of a sudden they will get up and active a little bit more than you would expect so we had some really nice days like at the beginning of march i think or middle of march and um, they got up uh, and they like to lay out in the sun here um, so that will affect them a little bit too do you ever have to wake them up or do they just wake up on their own they typically wake up on their own when they are in their winter months we never really wake them up on purpose uh, if they happen to wake up in the winter and um, want to come inside for a little bit of chow, they can, um, and then go right back out to sleep if they want. Um, but we don't wake them up on purpose. Uh, what's their life expectancy? Good question. In the wild, or in their natural habitat, I would say that a brown bear that lives to be this age is a pretty old brown bear. They are 26 years old right now. If you were to find one in their native habitat that old, that would be a pretty old bear. Uh, they typically live about 25, to 30 years. They can live longer in captivity though because they have food provided to them, they have um, vets that give them medication should they need it and check in on them for well-being checks. So um, they do uh, live longer in captivity. So I think the oldest, some of the oldest bears in captivity have lived to be in their late 30s. Why are Jim and Axie able to live in the same um, habitat? That's a good question. So big male brown bears like Jim and Axie would typically not share a territory or just overlap a little bit. Um, but Jim and Axie were neutered when they were young. Um, we don't have a strong need to breed brown bears in captivity because um, there are so many in the wild that end up having some bear and human conflict. And so a lot of times zoos will um, be a place for rescue for for a an, an, uh, problem bear out in their native habitat. So because they are neutered, um, they, don't, they don't end up fighting like um, two native bears out in their native habitat would. And so they've gotten along really well and been able to live together really well um, their entire lives. 
I was just going to ask, do they get along? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they like to, they have a system. They kind of know who goes first and who moves where, when, and um, they'll, uh, in the wintertime, they'll hibernate uh, side by side. And even now in the spring months, you'll see them laying sometimes side by side. Um, they kind of share separate sections of their bedding. They don't really actually snuggle with each other, but they're next to each other. And um, you can see them sometimes in the summertime play wrestling in the pool as well. So I think they provide a lot of enrichment towards each other. They always seem to other. have a lot of fun together. Yeah. Um, when they wake up after hibernating, does it take them a little while to wake up or do they just jump out of bed and say, I'm ready for spring? That's a good question. <laughs> it doesn't look like that. Um, it's not a jump out of bed thing. Um, they're groggy. They're slow. They kind of walk a little slow. Um, sometimes they even have hay and straw that's hanging from their fur a little bit as they kind of start to walk around. Um, and then each day they get more and more awake and vibrant and then you start to see them play um, wrestling in the pool and doing more of their summertime activities. But it's a slow process. Mm -hmm. So you talked about how you start to increase their diet in the fall and then decrease it before they hibernate. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, Just want to make sure I had that right. So after they wake up, uh, what kinds of management do you do with their diet? So we slowly add things back in. So in the beginning, we just add some fruits and vegetables kind of to get their metabolism up and going. Um, and then as the season progresses, we add more things like meat and fish and whole prey, um, which is like small animals um, that they could eat or um, hard boiled eggs, like more protein. And that just keeps increasing up and through the summer until late August when they get tons and tons of food. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if, if you did not, if you kept feeding them at the same amount all year long, would they still be triggered to go into hibernation? That's a good question. I think naturally, uh, they, if you kept feeding him the same amount, um, naturally, eventually, they would get so big and oh no. tired <laughs> that they would stop eating. Um, the, the, the change in the length of the day and the colder temperature will still trigger them to um, go and hibernate as well. Um, so that would be what your, your, some bears in the native habitat, um, they can get, some of the most successful bears can get quite huge. <laughs> Uh, so out in the wilds, um, what triggers hibernation? Like I said, the change in the daylight hours and the colder temperatures. Because they're really looking to conserve that energy through the winter months when there's not as much food available and then um, when it's very extremely cold. Okay. Um, I know that there's um, like a true hibernation and then kind of a pseudo hibernation. I can't remember what that one's called. Um, so are they they're true hibernators? So that's a kind of like tricky question. So torpor is the torpor, name. That's yes. It. So torpor okay. is the name of like the biological process when any animal's body slows down. Um, this can happen for a variety of reasons. So if it's happening in the winter time to conserve energy through the cold months where there's a food shortage, that's called hibernation. And it depends on the species. Some species like completely stay in torpor uh, during the whole hibernation, or an animal like a brown bear can go in and out of periods of torpor d throughout a day or month. Okay. Um, and then there's other animals that experience torpor for other reasons, like a hummingbird experiences torpor um, at night, every night, it's a daily thing, because they're conserving energy overnight. And there's even animals that experience torpor in the extreme heat um, during summer months and they kind of slow their bodies down to conserve energy during that extreme heat. So it can kind of be applied in a lot of different ways depending on the species. So we're here right now um, in Grotto 3. Well, we're not in Grotto 3. <laughs> <laughs> no, we they're, are not. <laughs> they're in Grotto 3. <laughs> Thank goodness. Are they, are they always in the same area? That's a great question. So uh, no. We are so lucky that this exhibit at Great Bear Wilderness was built with the idea of being able to rotate the bears around to different habitats um, whenever we want. So um, we can sometimes change them multiple times a day or we can keep them in the same spot for a little while and then switch. So it really um, it leads to a lot of flexibility and a lot of enrichment for the bears because um, they get to experience a new habitat and they get to smell what the other bears maybe were eating the day before. And um, it really keeps them nicely enriched. 
How did they get their names? Good question. They are named after two animal care specialists um, in that were taking care of the bears during that time, Jim and Axie. But they also have um, Clinket names, which are names from the native people of Alaska. So Jim's Clinket name is actually Coots Nuwu. And like Axie's Clinket name is Angoon. So when, when their official names are Coots Nuwu Jim and Angoon Axie. But we do that's call a, them. It's a bit of a mouthful. Yeah, we do yeah. call them for short, Jim and Axie. Yeah, I really like those names. It's so I'm, cute. Yep. It's nice that they've got their, you know, two, two names. Yeah. Um, do they like being in the sun? Uh, that's a good question. It depends on the temperature outside, just like us. So on a day like today, it's kind of chilly. They love laying out in the sun and just kind of feeling the warmth of the sun. Now on a hotter day, they will choose shade and um, they will choose the pool sometimes on a hotter day too. So um, they are just like us. And we also, um, even with their pools, we had a research project where we looked at the temperature of the pools versus how hot it was outside to see if there was an ideal temperature for the bears. And they are similar to us where they don't need the pool to be extremely freezing cold. They just want it to be like a refreshing cool, yeah. just like us when we go to yes. like a swimming pool in yes. the summer. <laughs> Do they have a favorite food? These guys love everything. They love so much stuff. I have um, not found many items that they don't like to eat, oh. um, but you know, fruit is a big, big one that they really like. They also really love having meat fish, um, hard boiled eggs. They, they're pretty open to a lot of food items. They seem like they're really good eaters. They are, they are. <laughs> they're very intent on their, their food. They don't even know that anybody else is out here, I think. I, exactly, right? <laughs> Jim came running out. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so sweet. I know you didn't see it. And he went, he went over by the window and then he was like, wait, no, I see some watermelon over there. And then he came running over here. It was so funny. That's Axie, awesome. Axie made a beeline for the he knew the one in the back. <laughs> That's awesome. So That's how, so great. How come they sit with their legs all splayed out like that? That is a natural bear pose um, when they're laying down. They do end up sort of putting their their back legs to the side. Um, it's a great question as to why. I'm assuming it's a like a physiological more comfort with the way that their bones are in their body. Um, but that is a very typical um, posture for a bear. Mm -hmm. Polar bears as well. Do they have tails? They have a little teeny tiny tail. They do. <laughs> it's very small, maybe like four inches long. But it's um, it's fuzzy and it kind of just camouflages into the back of their body. So you don't typically see it. Do they shed? That's a great question. Yes, they do shed. Twice a year, um, they will shed. How do they deal with the heat? Do they have access to air conditioning? Yes. Yep. In the extreme heat, they have access to air conditioning, which is our indoor um, behind the scenes area. Um, and then also, like I said, we have these pools, which have been put to an optimal temperature for them. Shade um, by the trees. And then also um, we have a huge walk-in freezer in our behind the scenes area so we can create giant ice treats that we can put out on the exhibit for them. We also have an industrial ice machine so we can bring wheelbarrows of ice out here and hide um, different enrichment in there and they can lay on it if they want or nose through it to help cool them off. So and They do like to spend a lot of time in that pool in the summer. They do, they really do. Um, who's the one who likes to hold his feet? while he's in the pool? That's a great question. It's both of them. Both of them. <laughs> they both do like to hold their feet. But what's interesting about their pool use in the summer is that um, Axie, our bear in the back, um, he does not mind getting his ears wet and he will submerge his head and he will um, use the pool in that way. If like we were to throw a certain food item in, he would even dive down to the bottom of the pool to grab a food item and come up. Um, but many brown bears don't like getting their ears wet no. and they don't typically want to do that. And um, our other bear in front here, Jim, refuses to do that. Really? Yes. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting that we have um, one of each. So that's and a I, good way to tell them apart underwater. Is yeah, that if, one if somebody of them is dies. Going under the water, that's Axie. That's definitely Axie. And yep. Jim, Jim is a precious he's, little princess. He he's keeping those ears get dry. His ears wet. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. What color is their skin? Uh, I think it's like a brownish color. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The color of their nose, so brownish black, okay. is what you have for their skin color. 
Are there behind the scenes tours available for members? We typically did have behind the scenes tours um, that were available for purchase, but right now we aren't okay. offering that. But the zoo is open right now, um, and you can check out um, the website. We're starting to open up some buildings. Our bear underwater viewing section is open, um, and dolphin underwater viewing in the swamp. Mm -hmm. um, and you can make reservations for a time to, to come to the zoo and see these guys in person. Yes. And hopefully as COVID restrictions lift, we'll be able to eventually start adding back other fun things. Yes, yep, absolutely. All right. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I really enjoyed uh, teaching you guys about hibernation, and we hope to see you here at the Zoom again soon.